Hey, what's going on guys? It is Caleb, and today we are going to continue learning a lot more about JavaScript. So we're um, going to pick up right where we left off with our while loops, and today we're going to do a little bit of some control flow. We're going to learn, um, really I believe the first exercise is just a review, but we get to look into the switch statements, which are really awesome, and it's really good for if statements. And, um, First thing to say, um, let's go ahead and go into their new uh, interface. So if you're not already in full screen, go ahead and go into full screen now so you can see everything that I'm going to be doing. And I'm going to go ahead and reset my code, and here we go. So if else, you've learned a lot about if and else and how they control what your program does. Here's a quick refresher on the syntax. If some condition, do something, else if, some other condition, do something else, or known as otherwise, do a third thing if other two, if, if statements fail. So the instructions are, write an if else statement inside the is even function. It should return true if the number it receives is evenly divisible by two. Otherwise, else, it should return false. Make sure to return don't console.log. So, you might be um, a little bit, you might be saying, well, um, what's the difference between returning and console.logging? Well, when you console.log, um, it's simple. You just, pretty much, you're writing something out to the console. But when you return something, it's like, if you were to call this is even function and pass in the number, whenever you return something, it's returning that number. And whatever code is after that return statement, and you'll see this in a second. It doesn't get run. It just whenever it hits that return um, command, it just automatically returns whatever this variable is or whatever you are returning at that moment in time, and it stops the function or the method or the statement, whatever you are running. So um, hopefully that would have um, solved or explained uh, or given you a solution to the difference between <laughs> a console.log and a return. But uh, let's go ahead and write our if statement. And um, what we're going to do here, if our number, or my bad, if number, and we're going to modulo it. And you may be asking, why are we going to modulo this? Uh, shouldn't we just div divide it by 2? And which, yeah, that could work if you were to divide it by 2. But if you were to get some of them odd numbers, um, it's a lot easier than modulo because um, it's just going to give you a tell you whether or not if you have a remainder. And um, if you're not familiar with modulo, so if you go back into one of the earlier courses, I talked a lot about them. But essentially what you want to do here is just if number is modulo moduloed by 2, and it'll auto automatically um, set it to 0 to check it with a 0. But if you still want to set it to 0, if it looks better that way, you can go ahead and put 3 equal signs and 0. Now what you want to say within your if statement is return true. Because if the number is divisible by 2 and equals to 0, well it's obviously going to, going to be an even number. So at this moment of time, we're going to return true. Else, we're going to say false, or returning false, in other words. And essentially what this is going to do, when we call our isEven function and pass in our number, we're going to check the number if it's divisible by 2 and equal to 0. So if the number is completely divisible by 2, it's going to return true. So it's going to say, hey, the number is divisible by true. Don't run any more code after me because we hit the return statement. Otherwise, if it doesn't or if it isn't divisible by 2, it's going to skip this first code block because it, it's not going to be run, because it is not divisible by 2. So in this example, if we were to pass in 9 and divide it by 2, we're going to get like um, 4.5, and that's not an even number. So here, we're going to just go ahead and skip the first code block and jump down to the else, and it's going to return false, and say if there was more code down here in this function, it will never get ran. So now what we can do, we can come outside of our isEven function, and we can just call our isEven function, and we can pass in 4 for a test number, and go ahead and save and submit. So as you can see, we got true because 4 is an even number. So let's go ahead and go to the next um, 
question. So here we go. So good. Also, let's also get some practice with else if, as well as learn about the fancy new function is nan. If you call is nan on something, it checks to see if that thing is not a number. So, for example, if we said is not a number, the string berry, it result in true because berry or a string is not a number. Also, if we were to call is not a number and then on nan, it would also say true because not a number is not a number, so they obviously it's going to result in true. Now, if we were to say is not a number undefined, it's going to result in true because undefined is not defined. It's not saying whether or not if it's a um, variable or a um, string or a number, it's just going to result in true because it's not defined. And now, if you were to say, is not a number on 42, since 42 is a number, it's going to result in false, because it only results in true if it's not a number. So be careful if you call is not a number on a string that looks like a number. Like, as you can see here, this looks like a number, but it is surrounded by quotes. So therefore, it is passed in as a string and it is read as a string. So um, JavaScript will help you by automatically converting the string 42 to the number 42 and return false since 42 is a number. So quick note, you can't just do is not a number unicorns unless you've already defined the variable unicorns. You can have however do is not, not a number and as you can see this is a string because it has quotation marks. This is saying is not a number quotation mark string unic unicorns which results in true as before the top one is saying unicorns as it's it's referencing unicorns as if it was a variable or something else that's already been predefined in which this case it hasn't and down here it's referencing unicorns as a string in which a string is not a number so we're going to result in true so the instructions are Add an else if branch to your existing if else statement. If the number put into the function is not a number at all, instead of returning true or false, the function should return a string that tells the user that their input isn't a number. Um, this string can say whatever you like. So, to get started, what we want to do is let's go right after your code and go ahead and add an if statement. And if is nan capital N so if is nan and now we're going to do the open parentheses and we're passing in number so what, essentially what we're saying here if it, uh, our number is not a number then we're going to return the string and what we're going to return in this string is going to be something like hey um, you're not a number actually it already added my uh, uh, ooh, ah, no, delete that my bad okay so um, what we, we are returning here is saying, hey, uh, return not a number because you did not pass a number through our um, function. Now, we come down here to our if statement below it. If the number um, modulo by 2 equals 0 return true, we're going to add an else if right here because now it's going to take the second conditional statement or an else if and it's going to check it again saying hey if it's not a number check and see if it's divisible by two and if it is divisible by two just return true but if it isn't divisible by two return false because it obviously can't be f even so I'm not sure if they want us to pass anything particular so let's go ahead and pass in four just like before so we got true because four is a um, number it is divisible by 2. So um, if we can go back, and I don't think we can. Let's see if I can go back. Okay, here we go, yeah. So I go back. Now, if we were to pass in a string and say something like, I'm a number, and actually, is this is this, is, this is the first one, ain't it? So here we go. We, now you can see that it passed not a number into our um, console. So that worked. Here's lesson two. I went back two lessons, but it's all right. So now we're on the third exercise. For or while, great. Just one more bit of review and we'll move on to new stuff. Instructions are create a for or while loop 
in the editor. It can do anything you like. Just be careful if you accidentally create an infinite loop, you'll crash your browser. Check the hint if you need a syntax review. Well, we all remember last week on how easy for and while loops were. So, if you're not completely sure on how to make either one of them, I'm going to go ahead and create them both for you now. So, um, to make a for loop, we first start off with for. Open parentheses, and we're going to create a variable. And a lot of people use x. And we're just going to say for uh, variable x, and we're going to assign it to 0. Make sure to put your semicolon because it's a statement that we are saying. And now we're going to say something like, oh, well, x is less than, let's just say, 4. Okay? And that's another statement, so we're going to go ahead and um, put a semicolon. And now we want to increment, or increment x 1 each time it loops, so we're going to say x++. Plus plus. And this will initialize, well, hey, every time x loops through this for loop, just add 1 each time. Open parentheses. And uh, we can just do something like console.log, because we're going to refer, or we're going to print out to the um, <coughs> console. And we can say some kind of string. Uh, actually, let's not put a string. Or actually, no, we can put a string. Let's go ahead and just say something like um, console.log, and uh, x is space, and then plus x. And what this will do add a semicolon after our console.log statement. This will print out x is, let's go ahead and say equal to, because uh, I think that sounds a lot better. Equal to, so each time that this for loop loops over, it's going to say x is equal to, and then it's going to print out whatever x is at. So we should get x is equal to 0, x is equal to 1, x is equal to 2, and x is equal to 3, because 3 is less than 4, so it should print out that. Now for a um, while loop, uh, let me go ahead and uh, so you guys can see this. For a while loop, we're going to just say while. And we can say something like, um, actually, let's create a variable up top. Well, uh, say var um, bob equals 1. And now we're going to say while bob is greater than um, 2. So while 1 is greater than 2, uh, Bob plus plus. And essentially what this is going to do, it's just going to add 1 to Bob. So Bob would only loop w once. And um, we could do a console.log out here, but you know it really doesn't matter. If you want to, go ahead and add it. We'll just go ahead and save and submit and see what it says. So as you can see, we got x is equal to 0, x is equal to 1, 2, and 3. So that was good. And then our Bob while loop went ahead and ran, but um, we didn't tell it the console.log anything. So we passed this exercise. Hooray! Way to go. Let's start the next lesson. And a sneak preview with the switch statement. So these are really cool and handy. Now you may be like, whoa, that's a lot of stuff. But as you might imagine, if you have a lot of choices, you want the cover in a program. It might be annoying just to type else if 10 times. That's why JavaScript has the switch statement. The switch allows you to preset a number of options called cases. Then check an expression to see if it matches any of them. If there is a match, the program will perform the action for the matching case. If there is not a match, it can execute a default option. So the instructions are to take a look into the code in the editor. Can you see how the switch statement works? Hit run to take it for a test drive. And we're going to cover this in a lot more detail in the next exercise when we learn about switch statements. But I can go ahead and tell you what we're doing right now. So right here, it looks like we're setting a variable called lunch. And we're prompting the user for what do you want for lunch? Or actually, that's the title. And this is going to be um, type in your choice. So that's going to give you the question and that's going to um this is going to be the default text that comes up into the um not this isn't the title i miss miss said that this is going to be the question the very first one <laughs> and this is going to be the default text that's going to pop up in the box now after you put in your um whatever you like for lunch what you eat for lunch it's going to run it through the switch statement and as you can see we're passing in the variable lunch that we just made that we got from the user. 
And it's now the first case is saying, well, if they said sandwich, we're going to console.log, sure. Sure thing, one sandwich coming up. And break, this is just a statement to break out of a loop. You can use these within for loops and while loops. And uh, as you can see, you can use them within switch statements. And it just, essentially what it does, it just breaks out of the code. So um, as you can see, we're within this um, console, or not this console, but we're within these two um, code blocks right here. This, this is all one code block. And whenever you break, it's essentially saying, well, break out of this. So we're going to, so if it does, if your case is true, so if you did say your lunch was a sandwich, it, and it hits this console.log and prints out, oh, sure, one thing, one sandwich coming up, it's going to break, meaning that none of this code down here will be run, and we're just going to start from right down here after the end of this code block. So um, the other cases are, well, if you input soup, into the prompt, well, it's going to say, got it, tomato's my favorite. If you say something like, oh, salad, it's going to be like, oh, sounds good, how about a Caesar salad? And then if you say something like pie, it's going to say, pie is not a meal. And then the default, now this is important to have a default right here. And it's essentially what you're going to, what this does, if you didn't put anything that matched any of these cases as pie, salad, soup, or sandwich into your prompt, it's just going to be, it's just going to default and say, huh? I'm not sure what, and then it's going to print out your lunch, and is, how does a sandwich sound? So, it may sound a little confusing, but um, hopefully I try to explain it a little bit, but it doesn't matter because we're not covering switch statements in this exercise. We're going to cover them in the next lesson. So, um, let's go ahead and save and submit the code. And as you can see here, we can just say something like a bunch of string, we should get the default. And as you can see, we got the default. So guys, if you liked the video and this helped you guys um, a lot, don't forget to leave a like statement or a like comment. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm so off. Don't forget to leave a like. And if you have any comments, leave them down below. <laughs> and don't forget to subscribe for more. <laughs> Until next time, guys. I'm Caleb. <laughs> uh, what a night.